Hey everyone, I'm TH Pine and welcome to Due Process. This game is in closed alpha right now, but I have access to it, so I decided to make this video to give you a little bit of insight into what this game is all about. It's under NDA right now, and while I'm allowed to talk about it, I'm not allowed to give you any videos or pictures that aren't available, um, publicly available already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take clips and videos from the publicly available blog posts and try to match them to what I'm saying in this video so you, give, get, you get a good idea on what this game looks like. Uh, what this game looks like. So this is going to be a pretty long ramble because I'm just going to talk about everything I, th I can think of basically. So I'm going to put timestamps in the descriptions below so you can skip the topics you don't care for and uh, go to the topics you want to hear more about. Um, so let's get started, shall we? So Due Process is a 5v5 tactical first-person shooter. So what, what makes this game stand out is the fact that all the maps are randomly generated. So you get a new map every round. That's technically not correct, but that's the idea. That was the original plan. The original plan was to generate a new map for every round you play, so you always have a fresh new map. Um, for technical reasons, that was that got scrapped, but we got a pretty good solution here um, that works basically to the same goal. So how it works is that there is an algorithm that produces the foundation for the maps. So it, it produces almost finished maps, and it produces tons of them, like a lot. And then a human human go, uh, takes these maps or these map foundations and and um, cuts the ones that are just bad. Like their the, the generator or their algorithm will produce a few ones that are just unsalvageable and they get cut. And then the human takes the other ones and makes them good. Like it gives, uh, they give them the finishing touch, uh, place a few more objects, change a few things around um, if necessary and just make them good maps. Because it turns out it's pretty hard to produce really good maps by random. So um, that's the idea. And the idea is to now streamline this process so it takes very little or as few human interactions as possible as um, so to make it really easy to produce a huge number of maps so um, when you play the game there will be hundreds or even thousands of thousands of maps available at the same time so when you get a new, new round and get a new map there is the potential that you played it before but even if but it's very unlikely and even if you did um, you probably don't remember. So the goal or the effect is the same as with the original idea. Um, there is no map knowledge in this game. So every map you play on, you have to make new plans. You can't like rely on, on things you learned before about this map. And uh, you have to make a new plan and well, well, play with it. So there's no map knowledge. And I think that's the outstanding feature of this game. And this is why I personally am so extremely interested in it and enjoy it quite a bit so far. So the general structure is one of attackers versus defenders. So as I said, it's 5v5. We have five defenders um, defending a building. They set up a bomb which has a timer on it. And then you have the five attackers which will try to breach the building um, and uh, defuse the bomb and usually kill the defenders. But not necessarily. They can defuse the bomb and just leave or whatever. Um, the goal is to defuse the bomb. So uh, the bomb takes 10 seconds to defuse. You you can like you have to hold the button while you do so. You can stop the defuse and um, it will not reset. So you can defuse it for three seconds, then come back or kill an enemy and then come back and defuse the, the last seven seconds to to win the game. So that's how the basic mechanic work works. Um, then the game is played in the, right now anyway. So the game mode might change, but right now it's played in a best of nine, so first to five mode, and um, they're side swapping after every three rounds. So you play three rounds as one side, attackers or defenders, and then you swap around to the other side for three rounds, and um, then after th after round. Th after round six, you swap or swap the side again. And as I said, best of nine, so after five victories, one team wins and the match is over. So this three round set structure is the foundation for another very important aspect of the game, which is equipment management, because you have a limited, um, a limited pool of equipment per side. So you're playing three rounds with the same pool of equipment. So the attackers, for example, they have an attacker van or a truck, and in, in that van is a big wall. And on that wall, there are a bunch of weapons and equipment. And you can pick them in round one, and then you go into the round, play a round, and in round two, on a new map, you spawn again in the van. And now the vo the, the wall will not be full anymore because, well, the, doesn't, the equipment doesn't respawn until you switch sides. So you have three rounds to play with the same pool of equipment without respawning it. Um, if you die, you will lose your equipment. But if you survive, you can take what you what you still have. So if you're like if you're losing, like if you're dying, like if you fall, if you get full team wipe for the first two rounds, then usually your wall is pretty empty at the beginning of round round three because you could not recover anything. Um, and you can also. 
you can also steal the equipment from the others uh, from the from the opponents if you survive and that's especially important for the defenders the defenders uh, right now they have a they have a defender room which also has a big wall which works the same way as the attacker van, van does but there are plans to change that system to a kind of economy system where you buy things but details on that are still foggy so i'm not going to go into detail on uh, or not going to talk about it but basically they have a limited equipment pool as well and defenders uh, defender weapons are in general weaker than the attacker weapons so especially for def defenders it's really important or really valuable um, when you survive around and you kill like you wander around and survived to to uh, loot the attackers and steal their weapons there are a bunch of reasons for that um a the, the weapon, weapons are better b they have some equipment you don't have access to that's true for the other side as well um and uh, c the attacker weapons all have flashlights which the defenders have not um, but we're going to talk about lightning in a minute or so so that's how equipment management works in this game um so let's talk about the maps shall we so there are a bunch of different ways of entering the building and this is really important because entering the building like that's that's the core premise of the of the SWAT um, power fantasy like the, the the moment you kick down the door you breach the door and you go in and clear the room so that's that's the core fantasy um, this game relies on so um, entering the building um, well is really important in this game so there are multiple ways of doing that there are green doors um, I, they're not really green um, but they're green like they are, are color coded on the map screen so you have a map screen where you can draw make your plans on and then you have the first person view where you just play the game and uh, on the map screen they're green they're not green in the first person view but they're re referred to as green doors anyway and they're they're green because they're free entries you can either kick them or you can shot uh, shotgun the handle to open them uh, a little bit quicker kicking them is pretty dangerous because it basically it it, uh, it puts you like it locks you in a spot in front of the door for like a second or so so you pretty pretty easy target so you want to avoid that if possible but if you have a shotgun you can just shoot the handle to 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 open the door then uh, the next important um, entry point are red doors in contrast to the green doors those can those are not free entries you cannot just kick them or shotgun them open you have to breach them with a door charge or a wall charge usually a door charge wall charges are used for other things but both work fine so um, they are usually actually red in the game um, because they're usually like fire doors um, so so yeah fire fire exit so they are big red doors, um, like heavy doors, which you cannot just open. So you have to breach them with a, with a door charge, as mentioned. And uh, I mentioned the wall charge, wall, charge, wall charge already. You can use them for blowing up a door, but you can also use them to, to destroy interior walls. Um, exterior walls are not like breachable but interior walls are with the wall charge so that's the idea of the wall charge you can either just use it on a door or you use it on, on an interior wall to not enter the building but to get a different uh, path through the building and basically all interior walls with a very few exceptions are actually breachable right now um, however, and that's a, that's the thing I'm going to mention because a lot of people ask about it. There is no destruction from bullets, at least not like on the walls and stuff. Like if you play Rainbow Six Siege, you can shoot holes in walls and stuff like that. That's not a thing in here. You can destroy some like props and stuff, um, but you're not going to destroy like solid cover or walls with just shooting them. You have to breach it or you have to blow it up with the charge. So um, other things you can blow up or enter through or whatever. There are fences. Fences are like they work like a. They basically work like an interior wall, but they're usually outside, obviously. So they're kind of exterior walls you can breach with a wall charge, um, but you, they're obviously see-through. So you can shoot through them um, on the other side, but to get through, you have to actually breach them open. Um, and there are, um, yeah. So that's that's another element that is. Um, not on all maps but on some maps like you usually always find green and red doors um the other elements are a little bit more special and are only on certain maps or certain tile sets even sometimes for example the shutters the shutters are only on the c store tile set but i'm going to talk about tile set in in a minute so um, another way of entering a building on some maps there are windows like a huge huge windows you can just uh well glass windows you can just walk through like the moment you you walk through them or you shoot them they they break and you they're just in a completely free entry but they're also th see-through so that's the difference to the green doors obviously they are also like small windows which you can shoot through which have like um, bars so you cannot actually get through them but you can shoot through them but those are not like a way of entering the building but there are things you can like you, sometimes you can look into a building uh, or outside um, that's important as well obviously so um, talking about windows 
Um, on the C store tileset, as I said, I'm going to talk about tileset a little more in a moment. But on the C store, so in the convenience store tileset, there are shutters because there is like a huge storefront. Um, which is well a glass storefront so there's a lots of st glass windows in the in the front basically and um, you could as mentioned just walk through them uh, to get into the building but the, the C store has a shutter um, which can come down and acts like an, like a wall and the interesting thing is that there is a button for it in the teller room um, and uh, you can press the button to get the shutters down or up and the teller room is like a little fort because it's not easy to entry uh, to enter um, and it's, it, it has bulletproof windows. So it's like a little fort and you, it controls the shutter. So usually what the defenders do at the beginning of the round, they press a button to get the shutters down. And now the storefront is, um, is not as easily breachable. But there is like situations where defenders want to pull up the shutters. Or there are situations where the attackers make a plan to get into the teller room and then um, open up the shutters to have, for example, have a sniper, sniper sitting outside and it's shooting into the storefront room. So um, shutters, when they are down, can be breached with either a wall charge, which just makes an entry, or with a door charge, which will not completely blow them up, well, but make like a little peeking hole where you can shoot through. So um, the last... Uh, the last way of entering the building I want to talk about is the fan. Um, it's only available on the factory tile set. It's pretty special, like it's a huge fan and um, it, it's active, so it's rotating. So you cannot just walk through because if you would, you'd die. But the game doesn't allow that to happen. You just like, it's, it's, it acts like a, basically like an unbreachable window. So you can, well, not really. Like, a, yeah, yeah, I guess. Like an unbreachable window, kind of. You cannot walk through, but you can shoot through. You cannot throw f uh, grenades through it, but as I, can, as I said, you can shoot through and you can see through. However, the fan can uh, be blown open with the door charge, which allows you for a free ent for an entry, not free, you have to charge it, but you can enter through the fan if you blow it up, or um, the fan will stop when you um, either shoot it from the inside, so if you get into the building from somewhere else and shoot the fan from the inside, it will stop, and at that, that point you can walk through it or throw grenades through it. Um, or you can turn it off by shutting, uh, turning off um, the power, which I'm going to talk about in a moment as well. So... Um, yeah, that, those are the different ways of entering the building. So what about the outside of the building? So there is a UAV, so a little drone that flies around the building, which supports the attackers. And basically what it does is it prevents the defenders from going outside. So the moment a defender gets in the line of sight of the drone, so he steps outside, um, which you, is you, like usually you, like there are ways of avoiding the drone, but usually the moment you step outside, it will lock onto you. And um, then it takes, I think, around two seconds until it shoots you. So at the moment you go out, there's like a huge light on you and, and a noise and stuff. And when you stay in the line of sight of the drone, it will shoot you and you instantly die. So that's the way of keeping the defender in the building. As mentioned, uh, as I just said, like there are ways of avoiding that. You can like stick to the wall when the drone is on the other side. Like it's rotating around the building. So if you time it correctly, you have a few more seconds to walk around and do some outside or exterior flank or whatnot. Um, so that's that's the mechanic around that. Then another very important very important map mechanic is the breaker because the breaker turns off the lights. And lights are really important in this game for the for the gameplay for the first person shooter gameplay because like if the lights are out it's freaking dark. You don't see shit on some maps. Like some maps are a little lighter on this like when they have lots of windows like on on factory it's played uh, on moon uh, with moonlight so if you're near a window there will be some illumination from outside but usually it's really Really, really dark. Um, you could also, instead of just turning off the breaker, you can, like, that's a tactic the defenders sometimes deploy. Um, they can shoot out the lights in a room, and that makes it really dark as well. But usually, power out is um, is an advantage for the attackers because they have um, two very strong tools to work around the darkness. Um, every attacker gun has a flashlight you can turn on or off, so that's pretty pretty um, useful when it's dark. And they have um, NVGs, which allows them to see like not perfect in the dark, but pretty good, like way better than without NVGs when it's dark. However, if you get uh, like if you're looking in a flashlight or or something or in a flare, then it's pretty hard to see anything with an, with the NVGs on. So that's kind of the downside for them. And um, so usually lights out is an attacker strategy. So the breaker is an important secondary objective on the map. Well, um, because when the attackers get to it, they turn off the lights, and the defenders are usually at a disadvantage at that point. So they want to defend that as well. However, there are some 
some down well not downsides but there's some some side effects to it so after i think 30 seconds or so um the emergency lights will turn on well um, on some maps not all maps have emergency lights but the ones that have will go on after the breaker um has been turned off uh and like after 30 seconds and they make like a dim red light so it's still not like not perfect visible uh, there's not perfect visibility there but they're definitely even out the grounds again so the defenders can actually see what's going on again and have can navigate on the map again and see the attackers most importantly and uh that's so that's that's the thing to keep in mind however after the like you can turn off the power again after the emergency lights came on and turn it off again after this so you wait for the emergency lights to go on then you per, uh, turn the power on and off again and emergency lights will be out will be off again and you have to wait 30 seconds for them to come back so um that's kind of the thing so after the attackers take the breaker they usually want to be quick because they only have 30 seconds until emergency lights go on and their their big light um light advantage or darkness advantage i guess um is diminished a little bit so another thing that happens when you turn uh, off the power is there are automatic doors. They're, they're usually referred to as ding dong doors because every time you get next to them, they open up automatically and they make a ding dong. So if you like stay next to the door and look, like move forward and backward a lot, they make a, a very annoying ding dong, ding dong, ding dong noise all the time. So that's why they're called ding dong doors. But as mentioned, when the power is off, those doors don't work anymore and they just stay shut. So um, that's really interesting on some maps where you like there is a strategy to take the power, but that will uh, like that, that will cut you off like that will cut off the short path to the bomb, so you have to go around. Or sometimes you can turn off the power and um, trap the defenders in a room because with no exit because you just close the door behind them. So there are some interesting mechanics with that. Um, and the last thing, last thing that <clears throat> the breaker does, which I already mentioned, is uh, it turns off the fan. So the moment the power is out, you can walk through the fan. Or the moment the power is out, the fan is a free entry. So another thing you can find on maps are fire extinguishers. Fire extinguishers are some, uh, like uh, on the walls, but you can pick them up and put them somewhere else. And the moment they get shot, they act as a pretty shitty, but like, no, not shitty, but they act as a unpredictable smoke grenade. So the smoke is not, like the smoke is unpredictable, but it's a lot of smoke. So it usually obstructs vision quite a bit, but it's not quite like, there are smoke grenades for the attackers, which are way more predictable. They have like a pretty, like, I don't know, I don't know a good word, but they have like a, a good smoke, smoke, uh, smoke cloud and the fire extinguishers just make like weird smoke. Um, and um but it's a lot of smoke so it's like basically a, a makeshift smoke grenade the defenders can use or the attackers in some situations as well so as mentioned earlier i want to talk about tile sets right now there are three different tile sets but there are more tile sets in the works um the first one is um the also already mentioned um c store or convenience store it's a little 24 7 market with a huge storefront which uh, has the shutters as i mentioned then there's the teller room where the shutters controls are in um the teller room is Usually a small but sometimes a little bigger room with uh, like bulletproof windows and one bulletproof door. Um, and this door is, it acts like a, it's a mix of a green and red door actually. Like you cannot kick it but you can shotgun it open or you can breach it open, open with a door charge. Sometimes there is another way into the teller room through a regular door um, which, you just can, uh, which you can just kick down. Um, but if you want to go through the front door into the teller you have to have a shotgun or... Um, or a, um, a door charge available for that. Usually the shotgun is the way to go here. Um, also, while the whole thing is bulletproof, there's like a little teller hole where you usually put the money through, um, which can be shoot, uh, which can be shot through. So that's an interesting um, thing. Like when you're when someone is hiding in a teller room um, or camping the bomb. Like often the teller the teller hole is looking at the bomb, so that the attacker cannot just sit at the bomb and defuse it because then they get shot from the teller hole so they have to clear out the teller first and there's a lot there there are a lot of situations where you have like this little peekaboo game around the teller hole which can be interesting you can also if you're really precise you can get a frag grenade or a, frag a grenade in general through that hole which is devastating for whoever is inside 
The Isiso also has like one special room, which is the freezer. The freezers sometimes have um, the freezer shelves, which basically are shelves in the wall. So they are a connection between the freezer and the storefront. And um, like there's stuff in them, bottles and whatnot, whatnot and uh, cans. And uh, you can look like you can, you have a line of sight or yeah, line of sight or out of the freezer into the storefront and the other way around. And you can shoot them. Uh, you can shoot the, the thing is like you can shoot the shelves uh, which will destroy them, which allows you to get through there as well. You can you can walk through them then there. So um, that's usually another like room you want to clear. Like if there's freezer shelves out, would lock in, looking at the bomb, the defender, uh, the attackers definitely want to clear out the freezer before they take like the, before they start defusing the bomb. Okay, the next tile set I mentioned already is the factory tile set. The factory, the factories are like defined by huge rooms usually. Like they have a few smaller ones as well, but mostly huge rooms. Um, and um, they have uh, fans, like there are only maps, a tile set that, ha that have fans, and they also have um, the dock doors, like the loading docks. The loading docks basically are basically, they work very similar to red doors, kind of. Like you can breach them with a door charge, which allows you to enter them, but they can also be um, open and closed from the inside with a button. And um, that has some interesting mechanics as well. So the defenders can open them, shoot outside, or walk outside for a really quick exterior to your flank if they don't get shot by the drone and um, so that's kind of the important features of the, of the factory they also have uh, off uh, or a lot of the factories have an, an office room which is in a lot of situations like elevated like it's a little higher than the rest of the maps like they'll see the factory is definitely the the map with the most verticality right now there's all there are also um catwalks where you can walk on and stuff like that there's there's lots of verticality and big rooms um uh, so usually you want to take like long range weapons and whatnot and also there's are no emergency lights on factories but there's the moon outside like there's full moon which brings some illumination in even if the power is out but it's it's still getting pretty dark in there um the last tile set i didn't mention yet is the kill house tile set um it's like a training facility um and it's basically like it's a training setup uh for the attackers where they train to attack a club so they train a scenario where the defenders have a bomb in a club in a nightclub and they they try to go in there but it's definitely a training area so everything is made out of wood and stuff and everything's just props and not like a really nightclub but it looks like one day there's a stage and whatnot and uh, and a pole and and um, with a pole dancer on it, which is just a cardboard cutout and stuff like that. So it's the the, the kill house is pretty. It's kind of generic, like it doesn't have really defining features, but it usually gets some interesting um, room combinations um, because um, be because they're they're a bit bigger. Uh, they're a little bigger than the sea so they're not as cramped. And um, but they're not like they still have small rooms. Like it's a lot of small rooms, except for the for the st uh, for the club, which is usually pretty pretty big. Um, but all the other rooms are pretty close quarters. But there are a lot of them, so there's a lot of navigation on on the on the um, uh, on the kill house tile set. Okay, um, let's talk about movement and shooting mechanics. So we're gonna start with the shooting. Uh, a lot of thing. One thing a lot of people don't know when they start a game is that there are three different shooting modes. You can just hip fire, or you can um, aim down sights, as in most in, in most shooter games. But there's also a third uh, fire mode, uh, which is called brace fire, which is kind of in between. So it's it's uh, you're not as slow as you would be while aiming down sight, and you're also not as zoomed in, but your accuracy is a little lower than that as well. But it's way better than while than hip firing, but you're also a little slower than hip firing. As I said, it's it's somewhere in between. Um, you can also sprint in the game, which, um, like, while you're sprinting, you, you cannot shoot, and um, but you can stop and then shoot pretty quickly right now. But sprinting is super loud, so sound is pretty important as well. Especially at the beginning of the map, uh, of, the, of the round, because the attackers are moving around the building and the defenders are trying to figure out where they're coming from, and they can, like, they can hear them sprinting around outside, because, as I said, sprinting is pretty loud. And... So that's that's an important factor. So if you want to go um, quiet, you can slow walk instead, uh, which you do by holding the control button by default. Um, and it well, it makes you walk slow but also quiet. So that's a thing as well. Right now there is no leaning. A lot of people talk, talk about uh, ask about leaning. Um, there might like leaning is not out of the picture yet. Um, there might we might get leaning in the future, but right now it's not in. Um, the the devs are thinking about trying out the ambi uh, ambidextrous aiming first, so you can swap the sight um, you're holding your weapon, which gives you like a little sight advantage, like depending on which corner you're you're looking at. Um, and if that works well, they might try out leaning, but right now it's not in there. Um, 
but we will see if that comes at some point. Okay, now I'm going to talk about equipment. Before I do so, however, I have to I have to put out a disclaimer. I'm not a gun I'm not a gun nerd at all. I try to use generic terms and I try to look them up so I don't say anything terribly wrong. But if I if I don't use the correct term, please don't shoot me. Um, I'm just trying to explain what the weapons are or an equipment, what equipment is available and what weapons are available and stuff like that. So let's start let's start with the attacker equipment. And uh, let's talk about primary weapons first. So the most common primary weapon for the attackers is the AP-25. It's a fully automatic all-round rifle with a decent fire rate and it can hold 25 bullets per mag. It's a jack of all trades, but it's really, really good at all trades. It, it excels but at, at basically any range. You can use it in brace fire and ADS. It has a really nice red dot side. You will, like, it's always a good pick. You also get 10 out there, so it's unlikely you run out. So if you're in doubt, just pick the AP-25. You will not regret it. If you want something a little bit more specialized, you can go for the Black Tower, which is a mid to long range semi-automatic rifle. It holds 20 bullets per mag and it just has more punch than the AP-25. On short range, it's a little harder to, to um, deal that damage because you cannot just hold the button down. But as soon as you get a little bit, uh, like as soon as you get in mid or long range, uh, the Black Tower is just a, tit, a tad stronger than the AP-25 usually. Uh, but you also only get four of those, so you have to spread them out over the three rounds um, a little bit. If you want to go close quarters, you can take the DL-12, it's the attacker shotgun, it holds 6 shells in a barrel and you can carry another 8 shells on your body. It's really easy with that thing to one-shot people in close range and it's still pretty decent in mid-range, like you usually two-shot people and this thing fires fast if you want to. So it's a, it's a strong pick if you're going for close quarters, um, you got 4 of those so you have to spread them out a little bit. Also, uh, keep in mind shotguns can be used to open green doors without um, like kicking them, so that's always always an important thing as well. So the last of the primary weapons for the attackers is the Sabre. It's a semi-automatic sniper rifle with 7 bullets in the mag. It has a night vision scope, um, which is pretty good when it's dark, but it's not as great when it's not dark, because it actually obscures quite a bit of your vision. Um, it also, like if you're desperate, you ha it has a brace fire mode, which can be used for mid-range or short-range engagements, but it's kind of hard. Um, the gun basically is better than the Black Tower on long range, mainly because it packs a punch, like you can one-shot headshot and um, defenders with it. Uh, however, it has a little bit higher recoil than the Black Tower, but the damage is worth it usually. It's kind of a power weapon, you only get one of those. For secondary weapons, the attackers only have one choice. It's the PK-57. It's an all-round semi-automatic pistol with 15 bullets per mag. It's pretty decent at any range, really. It can be used in ADS and brace fire, and it's just a pretty good secondary in general, so it's a good backup for when your primary runs out. And also keep in mind, it has a flashlight, so for defenders, this is very, very worthwhile to pick up when they can loot um, the attackers, because it's basically an emergency flashlight as a secondary in your secondary item slot. So that's pretty good. Um, you get 15 of those, so you will not run out um, in the three rounds you play, even if you die every round. So let's talk about tools, shall we? The attackers have 15 flashbangs, and flashbangs are really strong in this game. They have a flash effect when you look at them, and they also have a bang effect which even goes through walls. The bang effect has like mouse acceleration and will punch your aim and whatnot. It's really really annoying if you're too close to these things, and um, they can really tag out the defender for quite a while. It will not, however, flash attackers whatsoever, so usually as an attacker you throw it in and you run in with it at the same time. Um, so, because you will not be affected by it what, at all. And um, those things are really, really essential for room clearing because the attackers have to get in there um, since the defenders have the position advantage, obviously. Then we have four smoke grenades, which can be used for creating smoke, obviously. Um, they're good at blocking lines of sight. And um, yeah, that's like it. they're smoke grenades. There's not much to say about them. Then the attackers have two frag grenades, which are which deal decent damage at a decent range. They're good for taking out the car, for example, because they can destroy it. Um, they can also destroy barbed wire, which is really important um, because, well, yeah, barbed wire is annoying. And so yeah, you got two of those. Then you get three suppressors, which can be put on the AP-25, the Black Tower, or the PK-57. And they will make your gun quieter, obviously. And will also reduce muzzle flash, and it's a little easier to aim with them, uh, with them as without one. And um, they can be good if you like want to flank, or do a late flank, like if the team is going one direction and you're doing a flank through a different entry or something like that. Then they're pretty useful. You also get four NVGs, even though you have five people, so when you go for a blackout strategy, one of you has to rely on the flashlight or use the saber, which has a night vision scope. 
Uh, NVGs in general are very valuable in this game since placard strategies are so strong because when it's dark, it's dark in this game. And especially for defenders, looting NVGs can be very well valuable because they can surprise the, the attackers by using lighter strategies themselves when they are equipped with NVGs. So that's really strong. And they're in general very high value items. Then the attackers have two clackers which are used to blow up charges. And um, yeah, you basically you have to be close to the charge and then you have to click it repeatedly and it will clack, 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 clack and then it will blow up the charge. You get only two of those even though you have three charges. So you have to either um, like keep one from one round to another or use one for two charges or you will not be able to use all your charges obviously. You get two door charges, which are used, don't be surprised, to blow up doors. Um, usually for red doors, you can blow up green doors, but you can just kick them. So you usually use them for red doors or for the loading docks uh, on factory maps. Um, you can also uh, blow peeking holes into the shutters on storefront. And one important feature of door charges is, is that they destroy barbed wire. So defenders cannot just put barbed wire behind red door because well, when it blows up, the barbed wire will be destroyed anyway. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Then there are big tools, which are not, not going in your inventory slots, but you have to hold them with two hands. And as soon as you switch to something else, they will be dropped. So you got one wall charge, which is being used to blow up walls. Interior walls only though, exterior walls cannot be breached. Um, and you can also use it to blow up the shutters on C store, which is um, which gives you another way of entering the building. They can also be used to just blow up doors if you want to enter through a door and don't have a door charge left, for example. So that's valuable as well. Then you get two shields, which can be very valuable if used correctly. Um, they're pretty big full body shields. But however, in order to be fully concealed, you have to crouch while using them. And since they are big items, you have to hold them with two hands, so you cannot shoot while, do, while holding them. But they're impenetrable, so they are, provide pretty useful cover for you and your team. Let's talk about defender equipment. For primary weapons, the defenders have a lot of options and way more variety than the attackers have. First off, they have two Ingmars, which is a fully automatic gun, which holds 20 bullets per magazine, and it's pretty reliable on mid to long range. However, at these ranges, it's getting outclassed by the attacker's black tar, so be aware about that. Then we get the F1 Legros, you get three of those. It's a mid-range semi-automatic rifle with 10 bullets per magazine. It's really strong and reliable, but it has one major downside. It has a ridiculously high reload time, so you really don't want to reload this during a firefight. But besides that, very strong weapon. Then we got the KR-82U, you got two of those, it's a fully automatic short rifle with 30 bullets per mag, it packs tons of damage and is probably one of the strongest and most versatile weapons for the defenders. Then we have the Gruber 5, you got two of those, it's a short to mid range SMG with very low damage but a ridiculously high fire rate, it holds 30 bullets per mag and it's a headshot killing machine. But if you don't hit headshots reliable, it's not that great and is usually getting outclassed by other guns. Then we have a niche gun, the NEC-11, you get two of those, it's a very short range SMG with 31 bullets per mag. It's very strong at point blank range, but basically useless at any other distance, so be careful with it. Then we have four super shotguns, well it's a shotgun with five shells and you can carry up to eight additional shells with you. It's decent, but not as reliable as the, as the attacker shotgun. Then we have three power weapons, the first one being the mob, which is a single shot sniper rifle, which kills attackers with a single headshot. A body shot, however, will not kill them, but it will leave them with very little health. Um, it holds, well, a single shot and you can carry up to eight additional bullets for it. However, there are only 10 bullets total for it, so you will not be able to use it for more than one or two rounds usually. The next power weapon is the auto shotgun. It's a semi-automatic shotgun with 20 bullets per magazine. It fires at insane speeds and is extremely deadly on short to mid range. It comes with two magazines, which allows you to usually use it for two rounds if you don't lose it. And it's probably one of the strongest assets defenders have overall. The last power weapon is the shopping cart technical. Well, it's a shopping cart with an LMG strapped on top of it. It has 155 bullets which pack a punch, they penetrate walls and bodies alike and it's just ridiculously deadly. However, the downsides are major as well. It has a ridiculously low movement and rotation speed and it cannot be brought to the next round. You will not be able to pick it up at the end of a round and, and keep it with you. Let's talk about secondary weapons. First we have 7 GET 9s. A GET 9 is an all-round semi-automatic pistol with 20 bullets per mag and a pretty decent fire rate but the damage is not great however. 
Then we have three LS45s, which is a semi-automatic heavy pistol with really good damage. However, it only holds seven bullets per max. So you will run out of bullets way faster than with Get9. Last but not least, we have four small shotguns, which are just weaker versions of the super shotgun. They hold three shells and you can carry up to eight additional ones. Defender tools are very interesting. First, we have six barbed wires. Barbed wires can be deployed and whenever someone walks through them, they will be slowed down heavily and they will make a lot of noise so you can hear them approach. When deployed in choke points, they are very effective at slowing down attacker push and when you catch an attacker walking through them, they will have a hard time avoiding your attacks. You cannot, however, pick them up again, so be aware of that. Then we have four Molotovs. Molotovs provide a decent AoE damage over time effect and when comboed with barbed wire can create deadly traps. Then the defenders have three flares, which provide light for a few seconds when the attackers take out power. And last but not least, they have two all-can suppressors, which they can put on the pistols and the small SMGs. And that's everything. Uh, that's the game. If you found this video helpful, feel free to press the like button. And if you're looking for more due process content in the future, feel free to press the subscribe button as well. I'm TH Pine. Thanks a lot for watching. Have fun and see you next time.